It's been a busy time here at RDBK Studios and we have made some great progress over the last few months. The building system has seen some vast improvements with the introduction of the new plaster tier and the update to the stone and brick textures. We have added a large variety of new roof meshes as well as new doors and gates for all tiers. Work on decayed visual states has begun. Our stone exterior walls have been completed and are ready for testing. We have added new physics to our hair models, as well as adding a couple more options for people to choose from. All clothing now has a default color scheme that can be changed in your inventory. A new range of tier zero primitive weapons have been added. The rest of our work has been focused on our survival mode and its supporting features. Players now spawn into the safe zone. Here you can practice the combat without the fear of losing your gear, as well as buying and selling items to vendors. These will help players acquire items they have not yet unlocked through progression. Our progression system is now ready for testing with the addition of the research bench. This grants access to the tech tree. Gold ingots are used to progress through the tree. There are multiple ways that players can gain gold ingots. One of these methods are points of interest. These are scattered throughout the map. Inside, you can find barrels and crates that hold gold coins. These can either be used at vendors or smelted into ingots. Barrels can also be farmed along our new road network. Finally, a castle event has been added to the center of the map. A horn will blare, alerting you to the event beginning shortly. Inside, you will find the best loot in the game, the strongest AI, and of course, other players. Prior to the survival update, gold was used to create raiding equipment. We felt it was necessary for these to be two different tasks. So we now have split these into two resources, gold for progression and silver for raiding. Because of this change, we have added the mines. 
These are a long, complex tunnel system that spreads throughout the entire map. Inside is where you will farm silver for raiding. Deep in the center is the castle's dungeon. Here you will find an underground entrance to the castle event, as well as some high tier loot. AI is an area that has seen constant improvements. We now have multiple varieties of AI, each with a varying level of difficulty depending on where they are found. We have also incorporated a range of new animals to add more life to the world. We have now added the ability to invite players to your group. An in-game map has also been added. It will outline the location of the POIs as well as animal spawns and teammates. The animation overhaul has recently begun. The team is in the process of learning the skills and becoming familiar with the tools. With over 1,200 animations for our combat system alone, it will be some time before you are seeing these implemented. I am very happy to announce we are now entering into our final stage of testing, Survival Alpha. We truly can't thank you all enough for making this game a reality. Access to testing can still be acquired through our website. Sadly, we have reached our limit of testing keys on Steam. Because of this, we will now be running our tests through our own launcher until we are ready for early access. The entire team has had their heads down for the past few months working on the Raid Module and its supporting features. Raid Module, for those who don't know, is a game mode we have made to quickly test the survival features of Renown while also being an enjoyable experience for our backers that are playing it. Two teams spawn into our raid map on opposing ends. Players work together to gather resources, build their castles, craft weapons and armor, and progress through the tiers until finally raiding the enemy team in the hopes of destroying their banner to secure the victory. I'll now go into detail of each aspect of raid module in the order of what you would experience when playing it. This should help give a nice broad understanding of what the team has been up to and what you can expect when you load in. First off the rank is nodes. There are currently three types of nodes, stone, coal, and iron. Each time a node spawns, there is a chance that it will contain a varying amount of gold, and this is visually depicted by smaller or larger gold veins on the surface depending on the amount it holds. Gold is the resource that allows you to progress through the tiers in Raid Module. Smelted in the furnace, the gold ingots are used to upgrade your workbenches, as well as being a material for crafting raid equipment. Then of course you will need lumber, which is harvested from trees and stumps. Plant fiber, which can be harvested from flax, is then processed into cloth at a tailoring bench. Animal AI has been added. Crouching will not alert the animal to your presence and allow you to sneak up and take them out for that needed hide. Hide can then be processed into leather at a tailoring bench and used to craft weapons and armor. Now onto building. Building is a large aspect of the raid module, with usually one person taking on the role at the start of the game. The updates to the building system include the reintegration of triangle pieces and external walls. External walls are your first line of defense against a raid, and will also be used to contain the worker buildings once they've been added. Once your base has been created, it's time to start progressing through the tiers to craft better weapons and armor. Crafting and processing is handled through your workbenches and furnaces. There are three tiers, and each requires better resources per upgrade. You are going to need some place to store all the items you have either created, gathered, or stolen. Armor and weapon stands allow players to quickly equip items and its contents are shown visually. And of course we have crates for bulk storage and shelves to place them on. Bed rolls have been added, allowing players to respawn at a location of their choosing. It can get dark in the depths of your castle, so we've added a torch that can be held in your offhand and placeable torches for your base. Banners handle your land claim. Inside the raid module, each team begins with one already placed and it can be moved at the cost of gold. Outpost banners can be crafted to make forward operating bases or raid bases should you feel so inclined. Bows, crossbows, and thrown weapons have been added. Currently players have access to short bows, long bows, war bows, and crossbows, as well as javelins and throwing axes. The range mechanics are very much a work in progress and their functionality will be constantly changing until they are in a good spot. Last but not least, we have raiding. Currently we have two types of raiding equipment implemented. These include iron and steel handheld battering rams and catapults. The large battering ram and trebuchet are next on our list to be implemented. We are also happy to announce that Raid Module has now entered Alpha. That means anyone with loyal supporter or above now has access. That just about covers everything the team has done in regards to the Raid Module. There is a lot more we have to show, but we will save that for the next video. As always, thank you to our backers and dedicated mod team for supporting the development of Renown. We could not do it without you. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in a raid.